Bushcraft 412 and today by request from Mike A Maniac is the zombie survival kit. I avoided doing this video for a while too because these are just kind of you know really trendy but I thought about it and had some spare time tonight so I kicked out of work a little early and decided to put together the uh, zombie apocalypse kit. Now for, first of all let's just say I'm a huge fan of horror films and been a huge fan of the George Romero zombie films since I was a little kid and it, you know read countless you know, I probably every book out there on uh, zombie stuff, and you know, I kind of I can't believe I didn't do this earlier, but you know, here we go. Well, your biggest problem in the zombie apocalypse is that you're going to be vastly outnumbered. Zombies are going to be you know hundreds or thousands for every person, so you basically are living in their world, and you're only advantage in that world is that you have speed and dexterity and the zombies don't they just have numbers so with that said being well equipped you know in your home which is a whole nother you know video but it's going to come that time in the zombie apocalypse where you're going to have to leave your home whether your home is overrun or you know you just need to go out to get supplies or food you're going to have to leave your home and this kit is geared more towards leaving the home and how to kind of survive out there on the streets in the zombie apocalypse. And the first little neat piece of gear I want to show you is actually something I got back when I was doing armed security. This is a Velcro duty belt. And the reason why I like this so much is because it's Velcro. If you have a bunch of gear attached to your belt and say a zombie comes up behind you and grabs something on your belt or grabs your belt itself, that slows you down makes you victim to any any nearby zombies having a velcro belt you can detach at a second's notice is awesome because then you don't have to worry about being caught up and dragged to the ground by a pack of nasty ravenous filthy zombies so if you don't have one of those you can get them for like 10 bucks i think you can get them through like quartermaster.com uh various other sites to outfit like police and military and whatnot and there's a cool little item i use mine camping all the time uh, because it's nice when you want to sit down and be able to take your belt tools off and uh, put them back on without pulling your belt on and off and taking things on and off your belt. All right, let's get back. First part of the zombie apocalypse is having a kick-ass gun. You know, granted, you can, you know, your opinion may vary. Some people may want the, you know, 12-gauge shotgun. Some people may want a nice Ruger 1022 with 10,000 rounds. Well, I'll stick with my kel SU-16. This bad boy here is a... Uh, 223 chambered semi-automatic rifle that has a gas piston system similar to the AK-47 so it's a very reliable very solid system that, that just will fires every time and of course you know it takes the AR-15 mags so I have about six of them so if I go to leave the house I can walk out the door with about 120 rounds preloaded which is a good start in the zombie apocalypse because I believe guns that can carry higher capacity are your key to survival. Of course, we also have the Ruger 9mm. I only have like two magazines for that, so you're only looking at 20 rounds there, but that's a good secondary weapon. Or, you know, if perchance a zombie comes up and grabs your rifle, you definitely want to have a backup. Now, I got the Walther P22 up there. That's my backup to my backup. That's just one I can just stick in my waistband and keep and, uh, once again, I got, you know, two magazines for that, so I can have 20 rounds. So altogether, I can leave the house with 140, 20 is 160. I can leave the house with 180 rounds preloaded, you know, so I can basically fire 180 bullets without having to reload. I like having that ability. The scope on the SU-16 gives me an effective range of about 100 to 200 yards that I can take out zombies. The scope has a very good eye relief, so I can actually use it close, uh, close quarters as well, so... I, you know, effectively can shoot from 10 yards to 200 yards with that, and then the pistols are, you know, 20 yards and less. Um, above that, a good machete, always a must-have for the zombie apocalypse. That one there is the 18-inch cold steel uh, spear point machete. I picked that machete because, number one, it's 18 inches long, and that gives you quite a reach advantage over the zombies. you got to remember, short weapons means you got to let the zombies get close, that's 18 inches, plus that thing is thick as hell. You know, it's it's heavy enough where you can definitely lop a zombie's rotten skull clean off. So, 
I look for a longer and, and skip those cheap Latin style machetes that have a little bit of flex to them. Get a nice heavy duty like Cold Steel or, or K-Bar or Ontario machete because you want something really thick and really heavy that can really grind into that, uh, that zombie flesh. Um, what else can we do just right here? Oh, right here is a pair of binoculars. You always want to keep your peepers peeled for uh, fresh packs of zombies running around. So having a good uh, set of binoculars on your belt is a good idea because you can see those zombies long before they see you. Um, over here, we got the Cold Steel Shanghai Shadow. Very nice ring knife, which I like as a deterrent for the living. Um, you can use that as a very nice thrusting dagger style weapon. And it's a really cool carbon steel blade. Plus, it's got that ring at the end that you can use as a pommel. Very cool. Got re I got reviews on like all this gear, guys. So if you're interested, look at the channel and you can check out full reviews on this stuff. Next to that, we have uh, Run of the Mill K-Bar. Once again, very good utility knife. Good for digging, prying, getting into crates, opening cans, you name it. Another good deterrent for the living. Because you got to remember, you don't just got to worry about the dead. You got to worry about the living. Um... Right here is a Cold Steel uh, K4 neck knife. Now that is a very sharp, very thin knife, and I have a review of that puppy up. Laser sharp. I have that because if a zombie gets a hold of me, for whatever reason, or a piece of my gear, I want to be able to cut it free in like a second and not be caught up. So having a good, super sharp neck knife that you only use to cut away gear in emergencies is a great idea because some zombie lurks out of the shadows and gets this nasty hot claws on you you want to be able to cut whatever he's holding away quick fast and get out of there um, up here i may do full reviews i haven't done reviews on these yet these are the uh zombie bludgeons uh you can you know i was doing some research for the video and i saw plans for these on the internet plus i saw them on uh frenzied cons video uh props to that guy he's a really good zombie video and uh they're basically a uh 24 and a 36 inch pipe with some couplers and a trailer hitch on them and a little like butt cap on the end the small one weighs about four pounds the large one weighs about six pounds very deadly crazy weapons and gives you a good re reach advantage over the zombies and will no doubt smash the hell out of their rotten skulls so cool items probably going to do a full review and uh demonstration of how to make them as well um what else we got over here? Over here, good pocket knife, always a must. That one there is a uh, bird cara cara, just the first thing I grabbed out of the box. Uh, you definitely want a good folding, you know, three, four inch pocket knife, something heavy duty, you know, you can use for any kind of utility tasks. Uh, up here, well, we'll go in the middle first, is a good multi tool. In the zombie apocalypse, you may need supplies, you may need to grab things on the run. You know, having a good multi-tool that has a set of pliers and screwdrivers and all that could just happen to save your life. Um, up here, run-of-the-mill hatchet from, like, Home Depot. And you'll notice on the end it's got a carabiner. I'm a firm believer in the, in the zombie apocalypse is to having your tools that don't come with sheaths to be quick attach. And the best way to do that is just get a little bit of paracord and a carabiner, and then you can attach it anywhere onto your gear, onto your belt, onto your pack, onto your... You know, if you're wearing any kind of bandolier or anything like that, you can just quick attach things. So if you're using that axe to, to break into a house to get some food and zombies hear you, you know, instead of running with that axe, you can just clip it onto your belt and run, you know. So I'm a big fan of keeping things quick attach, quick detach. So stock up on like little carabiners, stuff like that. Up here, we have the marble fireman's hatchet. Very cool. Uh, that reverse end would be very good for uh, smashing zombie skulls. And would also work good as kind of a nice rescue tool or or for you know getting into or getting out of houses. No, it's not going to take down really heavy-duty doors, but run-of-the-mill house doors and things like that, that'll probably actually get through no problem. Uh, cool piece of gear. It's like 17 bucks. Got a good review on it and a good video of me using it and slicing my hand open with it. So check that out if you're interested. Cool gear and definitely strong enough to uh, smash in some rotten zombie skull. Over here. You have the uh, U.S. Military Trifold sho Shovel. Good item to have on your belt. Um, number one, it's a good improvised weapon. Uh, it's also like an improvised paddle in case you have to jump into a boat or make your own raft or anything like that. Plus, you know, if you do have to dig in somewhere 
and you just happen to need that shovel, you're making camp out in the woods, whatever, good little item to have. And you can put it on your belt and it doubles as a, a neat little weapon. That's it over there. Um, oh, up here in the corner is a set of uh, handcuffs. Good thing to have for the living because you never know when some pesky, you know, hero of the apocalypse is going to come and rain on your parade. Always a good item to have in case you need to get someone out of your way or detain someone who's uh, affecting your survival. Over here, we have a run-of-the-mill pipe wrench. And you notice I have a paracord uh, handle on that as well. Uh, one, because that's a good item that will double as a weapon. Very heavy, so you can definitely smash some close-range skull in with that. But uh, number two, say if your utilities get shut off or something, you need to shut off utilities or anything like that because, you know, it's a zombie apocalypse, guys. Crap's going to happen. You have that there where you can maybe shut off the gas or whatever to prevent explosions or whatnot. Next to that, we have Home Depot's Master Key. A good crowbar is an absolute must in the zombie apocalypse. This one here is like a... I think it's like a 14 or a 16 inch wrecking bar. I also put a paracord handle on that one as well. And part of the reason why I did that is so that I can quick attach it with a carabiner to my belt or my pack or whatever. That way I'm not caught off guard and I can run with it and do whatever. But that's a cool item for getting into buildings, getting out of buildings, opening crates, getting into things, rummaging for supplies, you name it. That's where you get that cool stuff from. So last but not least, is the mysterious package in front. What's in here, you might say? Well, a whole bunch of paracord. And there's more. We're going to get this paracord out of the way. Number one, the paracord is a really great item. And I don't just recommend paracord. I also recommend getting some good climbing rope. Uh, climbing rope is expensive and maybe not for beginners. But if you got the money, go take a class on rope safety and... Uh, self-rescue. I took one back when I did search and rescue work when I was in my uh, late teens. I went and took a, a rope class, learned to, to uh, belay, learned to rappel, learned to self-rescue. Very cool thing and lots of indoor climbing gyms will uh, train you for like 50 to 70 bucks. Uh, so having some good cord that you can climb with and guys I would not recommend climbing with paracord. It will snap on your weight. I know it's rated for 550 but I've seen it snap on our body weight. If you do have to, in an emergency, use it to, say, repel out of a building because zombies are, you know, busting in. Double or triple that stuff up, man, because it will snap under body weight. Spend the money. Get yourself 40 or 50 feet of good climbing-grade rope. Uh, with that, in the little pouch, I also have climbing-grade um, nylon strapping. Uh, this is rated for like 3,000 pounds or something in that neighborhood. And this one here is cut to length. This is actually cut to the exact length I need for a Swiss seat. And for those guys who aren't familiar, a Swiss seat is just an improvised climbing harness you make by tying this around your waist and your legs. Um, that way you can clip in with your carabiners and do any belaying or rappelling or anything you might have to do to escape a building or even climb into a building. You know, very good... Uh, skill to have in a shit hits the fan scenario or zombie apocalypse so any of you guys out there who are prepping get yourself a class in uh in rope technique and self-rescue and all that and start picking up like this thing here is maybe 10 bucks for this and i've got four or five of these down in my basement cut to different lengths uh these are really good anchors so if you're trying to get out of a building or something like that you can use these to save your rope you know because you can make tie these around a something in a building and then you know your rope won't grit against like a windowsill or wood or concrete or anything like that so they're great anchors you can make a swiss seat out of them you can make bandoliers out of these to hold your guns or your your uh, any quick attach or, or anything like that you can make your own gear and uh this stuff ties just like a regular uh rope so very cool item next i have is a couple of uh big gigantic nuts these actually came off the uh trailer hitches for the zombie mace and the reason why I have those on my climbing thing is because I can make improvised uh, pitons out of these. You just attach rope or strap or whatever to these. And say you are looking to rappel. You basically like jam these into a crack. And then the rope comes off these and it works as like an anchor for you. Once again, guys, if you don't have training, don't mess around with this stuff. Because using improvised gear can get you killed. But So I got those on my climbing gear just for that. And oh, I do not have it here. 
But the last thing I have is basically, I don't have it to show you guys, but you're going to have to take my word on it, is I have a couple uh, climbing grade carabiners. They are rated for like 3,000 pounds or, you know, you know, actually bought from a climbing store. I've got like three or four of them. Uh, like one or two of them are locking and then like the other two are not locking. Uh, that way I have that option where if I want something to be sturdy, if I'm rappelling, I can use the locking ones. And I have the other ones for just attaching stuff or maybe whatever I'm using them for. And uh, plus I have a couple of uh, Prusik loops uh, pre-tied with some uh, climbing rope that I've had for... Uh, couple of years now. I basically bring them with me whenever I'm like climbing in the mountains or or doing any work near cliffs or anything like that because like I said I was you know I did search and rescue work when I was younger and uh, people you know when you're up in the mountains there's cliffs and people fall off I mean it's good to have Prusik knots Prusik loops you know because you could use them to make a, a Prusik knot or an auto block which you can use to self-rescue which basically it's a knot that creates friction on a line and you can make foot stirrups you know of course out of your other line or your your nylon webbing and you can make these foot loops and basically climb up a rope under your own power without having to actually climb the rope and it'll hold you the friction you know on the knot really cool stuff guys like i said one of the biggest skills you can learn number one is to shoot shoot number two is to learn some uh, rope skills learning your knots learning your climbing knots learning how to self-rescue unbelievable skill because if you're trapped on the fifth floor of a building and zombies are busting in the door Knowing how to repel and repel safely is a cool, cool thing to know. And plus, if you're an outdoorsman like me, it's just good to know because if you ever do slip down a cliff or, or something like that, you do know you have the ability to self-rescue. So it gives me a little extra confidence in the woods. And lots of times I do bring the uh, the webbing and some of, uh, some of the smaller pieces of uh, climbing grade rope. I have like a couple like 10 and 20, 20 foot pieces of rope. Um, kicking around you know, I bring them with me just in case and then usually you know every once in a while I'll bring the bigger you know I have a, I think a 60 foot repelling rope somewhere so I bring those with me a lot and use them sometimes when I'm camping just to play around and, and keep sharp on my skills so I hope you guys enjoyed it's the zombie survival kit and I think the only thing I really don't have in here that you really should have on you is a can opener because you know what if you're out and rummaging through crates and picking up supplies and you find a sweet, sweet can of canned chili, you want that can opener handy so you can open that bad boy up and have some food. Hope you enjoyed. Bushcraft 412.